Arjun is in a miserable position. That is not the position of Arjun, the person. That is the situation of entire mankind. That is the conflict that we all face daily, every day. So first of all, it is not about Arjun and Krishna. It is not about two persons. Arjun and Krishna are both within us. Krishna is not standing in front of Arjun. Krishna is the heart of Arjun. The Brahmin rejects one who knows him as different from the self. The Kshatriya rejects one who knows him as different from the self. The worlds reject one who knows them as different from the self. The gods reject one who knows them as different from the self. The Vedas reject one who knows them as different from the self. The beings reject one who knows them as different from the self. The all rejects one who knows it as different from the self. This Brahmin, this Kshatriya, these worlds, these gods, these Vedas, these beings and this all are that self. The Brahmin, the Kshatriya, the worlds, the Vedas, all the beings in the world, they all essentially represent the mind. Hmm? All of them are images, appearances, objects in the mind. Yagi Valke is saying, the worlds reject the one who takes the worlds as different from the self. Let us simplify it to just say that the world or the mind rejects the one who takes the world as the world and not something beyond it. If you take the world as the world, you will be rejected by the world and you will suffer in the world. And that is the reason, the only reason why anybody ever suffers. You take the world as the world, you do not take the world as a projection, as an image, as a forthcoming, as the leaves of something else. If you take the world as a reality in itself, you are mistaken and you will pay for your mistake. If you take the world as a reality, then you will take yourself as a smaller reality, as a limited, partial, isolated existence in the world. You might be big, but the world would always appear bigger than you. And smallness is not something that you can ever compromise with. Smallness cannot satisfy you. The nature of all beings is largeness, infinity. And that is why desire exists. That is why you want more and more. And that is why the truth has been called as Brahm, coming from the root word which means ever expanding. Our nature is limitlessness. But when you take yourself as a small person in the world, you have already defined yourself as small. If you have defined yourself as small and you see only the world around you, then the only way you can think of to become big is to use the world. You conclude that you are a small being. Who must use the world to become large? The world now becomes both an opportunity as a threat. The world is now an enemy that wants to take away from you 
that which you already have and the world is now an opportunity from which you can extract something that will make you bigger and that is the life of the worldly man a life of fear and greed he lives in fear that that which he has will be taken away and he lives in greed that there is so much lying outside of him available for exploitation and consumption both are suffering because that which you have is any way going to be taken away you are trying to protect that which does not belong to you you are trying to hold on to that which you anyway do not own it is certain that you will lose it and you know that and so you suffer all your efforts towards securing who you are go waste but you still keep trying that is as tragic as it is foolish and you also keep getting excited in ambition the world is such a huge temptation why can't i get that why can't i get that ya keval ke saying if you take the world as real all that you will get is suffering do not forget that that which you want from the world is not the world but satisfaction you do not want a new car you want peace through the car and you have never bothered to examine whether the car coming from the world can ever give you peace you do not want victories you do not want achievements you want a certain contentment through your achievement and you have never bothered to enquire whether contentment can ever come through achievement take the world as real and you have taken the keyhole as the house how many of you would be comfortable sleeping in a keyhole but that is what we want contentment through achievement achievement is so small like a keyhole and contentment is large like a house but you want achievement rather than contentment thinking that achievement will give you contentment can the keyhole ever give you the house you go to the keyhole and you get stuck there it is so small you cannot pass through it your achievements are going to be smaller than you because they are your achievements if you are the man your achievement will be the keyhole in front of the man how will the man feel sleeping in the keyhole how will the man feel even passing through the keyhole nothing that you do can be bigger than the doer that you are if whatever you do is always going to be as small or smaller than yourself then how do you expect your doing to bring greatness to you take the world as a source of contentment and all you will get is suffering know what you want from the world and you will have it without using the world if you can know why the beauty and the prosperity of the world appeals to you then the knowing itself is the beauty and the prosperity if you do not know what you are seeking then you keep running after something that you are not really seeking and that is your punishment it is like a thirsty man gathering a lot of salt and spices when that which he really wants is 
some water. Now, even if you accumulate all the salt and spices and chilies of the world, would you get what you want? Would you? Would you? We all have a lot. The question to ask is, is that what we ever wanted? There is nobody sitting here who does not have anything. You have everything. Something in physical terms and a lot more in mental terms. You have cars, houses, property and you also have thoughts, ideologies, respect, prestige, opinions. Is that what you really want? Is that of any real use? If that is of any real use, why are you still searching? Why are these eyes still thirsty? Why does nobody ever stop? Except a few, a few like these, like a Krishna, like a Buddha, like a Kabir, like a Nanak. Why don't people stop even after having so much? Because what you have is not at all what you want. And remember that what you want is just that which you really are. Which means seeking is the only barrier against realization. Look for it and you have lost it. Because what you want is what you are. If your want is so immediate, then even half a step taken towards achievement of the want is half a step taken away from yourself and from realization of the want. You start chasing, assuming that you do not have it. Is your assumption right? You look for completeness, assuming that there is something missing and incomplete about you. Are you really sure? Who told you that you are incomplete? Why do you carry this deserted look on your face? Who taught you to beg forlorn like a like a beggar, obviously? When Maitreyi is prepared to let go of the husband, that is the moment she becomes one with the husband. Till the time she keeps clutching and begging and weeping, the husband is lost upon her. The way to get the highest is to let go of the highest. Let go of everything, including even the highest. Getting go, let, letting go of the highest is absolutely necessary because anyway everything that you aim is just a proxy for the highest. You are all right as you are. You are already there. Drop all thoughts of incompleteness and when you start dropping thoughts of incompleteness, 
you might be surprised seeing that all your thoughts are of incompleteness. You never think without thinking of something as important. Would you ever think if everything is not really important? Whenever you think there is an object of thought and that object do you know in your thought is the God object. Objectification of God is the only sin. And every object that you deem as important becomes as a becomes a proxy for God. The proof is your devotion. When you are thinking of something, are you not fully devoted to it? Are you not so concentrated and focused when you are thinking even of a morsel of food is not that morsel, the only object that clouds and dominates your mind? Do you see the status that you have given to food at that moment? What is the status? The status is of God because only God is to be allowed to dominate and possess the mind. But we allow so many things to dominate us. Whenever you allow a thing to dominate you, you have given that thing the status of God and that is blasphemy. That is something for which you can never be forgiven. Let the world be important for you and you have made the world your God. You will be punished and we are in fact punished. 